do one other thing before we close. Um, this is cut six. Stacey Abrams was the Democratic candidate for governor in the last election cycle. And Abrams is now blatantly just playing, and has been for months, blatantly been playing to any number of presidential candidates since last year, but now Joe Biden, to be the vice presidential nominee. Well, this clip is not about that. This clip is where she talked a little bit about the reopening of the economy and not reopening. Take a listen to this on MSNBC yesterday. As a small business owner myself, I understand the instinct not only to preserve your family's economy, but to protect those who work for you. And the responsibility of a business owner is to first protect your workers. That cannot happen when you have a nail salon where there's no possible way for that technician to be distant from their customer. When you are running a restaurant that requires face-to-face -face service, the reality is every small business owner should be able to look to the federal government for the Paycheck Protection Act. And instead of these large corporations receiving millions of dollars, those dollars need to be directed to those small businesses. We should not be putting people's lives at risk because of the antiquated systems of financial delivery that we're facing. That's one of the reasons Project 100 is so important to me, because it's about delivering cash payments to those workers who are on the front lines who still, even though being employed, still receive SNAP benefits because they're not making enough to make ends meet. This project is designed to provide that direct cash assistance, and that's what the federal government should be doing through the next COVID package, and that should be the solution, not putting people's lives at risk so that folks can keep their job. In other words, what Stacey Abrams is saying is the solution needs to be government handouts and government support for weeks and months on end. Now, as we were talking about with Heidi Ganahl, again, board chair at Job Creators Network, the idea that these companies, small businesses, should just be able to look to the federal government for support through the Paycheck Protection Program into perpetuity, and that the federal government should also be consistently providing cash payments to the people to help us get through this. That's not a solution. That is a Band-Aid that is actually hiding a gushing wound underneath, like a really good bandage, let's say. Just put a bandage on it and hide the wound. Here's the problem. When you unleash that bandage, you take off the bandage, and suddenly... The blood just starts gushing out because the economy has been suffering underneath and you've been just trying to keep it at bay. And then suddenly you allow it to gush out because, well, finally you're reopening the economy and you've had it shut down for months. You are going to see a massive recession at a minimum, if not a second Great Depression, which we need to avoid. So this is not a solution, as Stacey Abrams is putting it, having small businesses just look to the government to provide endless money somehow from thin air. I mean, Nathan Matouche works the Matouche magic here as producer extraordinaire. I don't think even he is a magician who's capable of just getting the money flowing to these small businesses ad nauseum. And same thing with the people who uh, are they want, she wants to just get cash payments, which is you and me. We cannot just and should not just expect that the government is going to be there for weeks or months on end and that that is a solution. Now, I understand her point about nail techs or a hairstylist and how you can't really be socially distanced with those kinds of jobs. That's true in terms of having to get, I mean, if you're doing somebody's nails, there's no way to not touch that person. But if you can yourself make sure that you are perhaps wearing gloves, the plastic uh, gloves, maybe that's possible to, to do. If you are uh, making sure that you're washing your hands regularly, that you are wearing a face mask, that you require that customers come in with a face mask on uh, in some way. I mean, I, it's tricky perhaps to wear a face mask when you're getting your hair cut, but there are ways that I think these companies can be innovative and creative in getting things going so that they can at least serve customers to the greatest extent possible. Surely there are ways to work on this and to be smart about it and also to trust the people. Trust that these businesses are not going to want to just put their workers in harm's way because 
they, 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 they really do have relationships with their workers. They really do not want their workers to pass on diseases to their customers. They don't want customers to infect their staff and then the staff spread it to all their staff and then they have to shut down again and the word is out that infections happened at this sport clips location just as one random example and therefore you shouldn't go there anymore they don't want that kind of reputation so businesses will take precautions they will figure out how to do it successfully we've been talking about innovation all day we were talking about it with howard husick from the Washington Examiner, well, he wrote a column for the Washington Examiner. He's with the Manhattan Institute. We were talking about innovation with him. We were talking about private sector innovation with Heidi Ganahl. That's what this is about, is being innovative and creative and finding solutions. And if anybody can do it, it's the private sector because they have motivation to do it. Look, Adam Smith talked about how it is not from the benevolence of the butcher that we get our dinner but how it is, it is how he's working towards his self-interest. Not a literal word for word quote, but I'm paraphrasing here. It is about the invisible hand. Somebody is working to make a buck. They want to make a profit. Therefore, they're going to provide a good quality service or product to customers. And they don't want those customers to get sick and not want to come back or be scared about going to your place of business. So they're going to be smart about it and be innovative and creative, especially when it's really ingrained in people that you need to take these kinds of precautions. We cannot just keep looking to the government like Stacey Abrams and Joe Biden, Zeke Emanuel and Philip Rucker and Don Lemon and David Zirin and all the rest want us to do. And the reason, again, why they want us to do that is because they believe that the government can and should provide. And that is a difference of human, an understanding of human nature and the role of government more than anything else. We can get through this. We will get through this. And it doesn't mean that we have to or should keep things shut down. Let's trust the people. Let's trust the creativity and ingenuity of the people. Unleash the unlimited potential of each and every individual. Thanks for watching this clip from Jimmy at the Crossroads. You do not want to miss a minute of engaging, intelligent talk. Subscribe today to the Jimmy at the Crossroads YouTube channel and you'll be sure to catch our live broadcast. I appreciate your support. I got Jimmy at the Crossroads Making sense out of no No sense Yeah. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> yeah.